Welcome back to the Green Yard. It is a uh, late November afternoon and we're over here in the food forest part of the Green Yard. You can see all of our ultra tropicals are tucked into their uh, nice cozy um, cocoons there and ready for uh, the winter. We have our jackfruit, a beautiful jackfruit tree right behind me. Uh, that was kind of a staple uh, feature of this side of the green yard. It's now, of course, covered up. Our African tulip tree behind that. Uh, we have our carry mango, our uh, um, hog plum, chipotle, our uh, big, huge, giant papaya tree, java de cava, plumeria, and so on and so forth over here in the food forest part of the green card. Your green yard. And of course, we do have our beautiful koi fish pond as well. And those koi fish are happy, even with the colder temperature that we're having right now. But we're over here to talk about um, something that I don't usually talk about, which is something other than fruit trees. We tend to talk about fruit trees, maybe shade trees once in a while here, but we don't really talk about other features to the green yard, such as our grasses, uh, which can really add a nice uh, design element to uh, a space and this one in particular happens to be edible as well this is a lemongrass um, and so you can just take a little portion like this and if you scrunch it up uh, between your thumb and your forefinger and then you give it a nice good whiff oh it smells just like it smells amazing it smells just like lemon and um, these grow Sorry, I had to get another sniff in there. These grow pretty well here in the Phoenix area. Um, this one's actually really big right now. Um, this one's almost four feet tall. I'm, I'm uh, just over six feet tall, uh, six two. And so this lemongrass has been growing for quite some time. It's about you know four feet tall, doing really, really well over here in the food forest part of the green yard. Now this is a really established microclimate. I actually have two over here. I got one over on the other side of the koi fish pond as well. Uh, they seem to like that established microclimate a little bit better. They are still frost sensitive, so they can be affected by frost, but not to the extent that uh, I would ever cover a lemongrass. Typically what happens is if they are affected by frost, they'll just die back. Um, you know, it'll all turn brown and they'll die back down to kind of the base. Um, and then they'll come back the next year and produce these beautiful, gorgeous uh, leaves again. Um, I do have, I, I have some spread out throughout the green yard. I have a couple more over by the pool area around my bananas. Uh, and then I also have, uh, or had some over on the other side of the house, uh, kind of in that side door area. Those ones over there died. I'm not quite sure why. I actually think they were getting too much water. Um, so they, they unfortunately are not around anymore. But the nice thing with uh, lemongrass too is that you can propagate them uh, through their different stems. So each, each one of these kind of six or seven leaves is its own stem. And you can take those out of the ground and then go and propagate them elsewhere. So um, at some point in time, I will do that with this lemongrass and probably our other one that's doing really well over here in the food forest part of the green yard i'll propagate them and put them in other places um people also claim that they help with bugs i have not personally experienced that uh, we have just as many mosquitoes as we did prior to planting lemongrass so 
Um, I haven't noticed anything with bugs. Maybe it's if you, you know, break it off and rub it on your skin, uh, that might help. People also do use this for uh, tea. They make a lemongrass tea. I haven't done that yet, but I, I do want to try. I've heard it's really, really good. So let's talk a little bit about planting the lemongrass tree and taking care of it here in the Phoenix Valley. Here we go. that I was talking about before for example this would be one stock right here um, so you could technically take that out from my knowledge and propagate it there's a couple more stocks in here as well that you can see uh, here's one here and here um, pretty straightforward I haven't done a whole lot in terms of amendment these ones have been really neglected um, the nice thing though is that they are um, still in uh, kind of the food forest part of the green yard. So they have had some uh, mulch added around them. Not really any soil amendment when I planted them. I did a, I did, I still did my mixture, um, but I didn't do anything crazy in terms of, you know, mixing the, mixing the soil. I, I did about 50, 50 with that soil. You can see it's kind of dense down here, a little bit of a jungle. Um, and that seems to be what they like. It is also decently moist, but they're growing in more of that clay soil than a lot of our other tropicals. So if I go in here where the jackfruit tree is, you can see um, the trunk of that jackfruit tree there. And I just reach my hand into this mulch mound. You can see it's totally a different consistency than by the lemongrass. Obviously our uh, jackfruit tree needs more of that, you know, dark, uh, nutrient rich soil and is more of a tropical tree uh, the lemongrass seems to be okay with only a slight mixture and a little bit of mulch as opposed to um, that really really dark rich soil that some of our other tropical trees need um, I do I fertilized it right when we first put it in the ground I gave it some sulfur um, it does get supplemental sulfur from both the Falon mango, which has not been covered up yet in its cocoon, and also the jackfruit tree on the other side of it. So it does get some supplemental uh, sulfur. Uh, lemongrass do like a lower pH, not as low as some of our other tropicals, but definitely a lower pH. So some sulfur is a good thing when planting the lemongrass. All right, so one of my kind of long-term goals with this area over here um, we ended up putting in this block fence, which changed a few things with what this area was going to be, uh, because we had to move it closer and lose a little bit of space. But the goal is to actually make this all the way up to into the lemongrass here, make this into a wooden deck. So we'll actually have a raised wooden deck here. And then I'm also going to install a hammock, which I'm going to hopefully do a episode on here in a, in a little bit. Uh, so we're actually going to install a hammock across that raised deck to you know, be able to look at some of those koi fish that you can see over my shoulder, enjoy this beautiful space that is the food forest part of the green yard and just have somewhere to relax and enjoy life. And these lemongrass with that beautiful smell will definitely help be a part of that uh, relaxing food forest part of the green yard. So that's a short episode about planting and growing uh, lemongrass here in the Phoenix Valley. As always, live green, plant lots, and of course have fun. We'll see you next time.